Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel or oh, welcome if you're new here. This is the fourth and final video of the marathon theme series. The last videos have been rather long <laughs> and I'm gonna try to keep this one short because I don't have tons of things to say. So the reason why I'm making this video is because when I decided to run the marathon in January, so the marathon was in April, I really wanted to see if running this much would affect my flexibility for personal reasons because I like to be flexible, I'm trying to get more and more flexible as I practice more yoga. And the second reason is that if you don't know and you're here just for the first time, my other job is being a yoga teacher so I teach yoga and obviously yoga is a lot more than a physical aspect and the being flexible but for me it's pretty important to remain flexible and be able to show things and inspire people that way. I know a lot of people won't agree with me saying that being flexible inspires people and students but that's my personal take of it. So yeah it was quite important for me and I told myself look if I really feel like I'm getting super stiff I'm gonna stop running and not do the marathon because it's not worth you know losing that much flexibility but I was also ready to give it a go and be okay with losing a tiny bit if I ever lost a tiny bit we'll find out later oh when is she gonna put it back on now <laughs> So the reason why I'm doing this video is because I was looking for that information and I did not find anything except for a few yoga classes like yoga for runners things like that on YouTube but other than that I never saw someone that was a yoga teacher and was running or prepping a marathon or that was a yoga teacher and runner at the same time giving tips on how to deal with like the tightness of running versus the flexibility that you want to achieve in yoga. So let's get into the real topic. So over 13 weeks of training, including the marathon, I tracked my progress every two weeks, so every fortnight, I would do six same poses and those poses were selected because they target different parts of the body. So I made sure to target the front legs, the back legs, the back, um, pretty much everywhere except maybe the flexibility of the fingers because who cares before doing the poses I would make sure to be warm and I would do the exact same warm-up before every time that I filmed myself to see the progress so I would do 10 cent salutation if you know yoga you know what it is and I would also make sure to track the progress every time on the same day so almost every time I did on a Tuesday and the reason why I didn't choose Monday to do it is because usually I would run long runs on Sundays. After long runs, my body was obviously tighter, but it wasn't a good reflection of what my normal body was. There's this tightness in the muscle that's not really a, a, an accurate measure of your own flexibility. The only time that I didn't do it on Tuesday was after the marathon. I did it on Thursday. Thursday, I don't even think, maybe it was Friday actually, no it was Thursday. After the marathon, it can be really dangerous to stretch too much and you will see some of those stretches are pretty intense and I just didn't want to risk tearing a muscle so that's why I waited a little bit more time. So now is the moment of truth. Did I lose flexibility or did I remain the same? I was still practicing a lot of yoga so I could have potentially progress in the flexibility, so let's find out.
let myself go into a deeper stretch. I just feel my muscle is quite stretching right now, so I don't want to risk this. So as you can see, the difference between week 1 and week 13 is very little. I mean, in my opinion, it's very little. Maybe you've seen more difference than me, but I don't think that we can say that running made me less flexible. The thing to consider though, my psoas got torn um, before the training and so once I knew that I had that I had to be way more careful stretching and I wasn't stretching as much and I wasn't practicing as much so um, I don't know if like it's the increase of running that would make me tighter or the fact that I wasn't stretching as much as before either way I think the combination of running plus not stretching enough just demonstrate that running did not made me less flexible. I have to say though, maybe week 10 and week 11, maybe, yeah. The stretches felt a bit more intense when I was doing it. Week one, a split was very easy and I wouldn't feel anything in it. Week 13, mm, ah, <laughs> a little bit more. So, how did I remain flexible running consistently? I would say on average, I was running around 30 km per week, so three times a week. First three weeks it was less and then at the end it was more than this, so it's an average. These are the five main things that I've done and five main tips that I can give you in case you're also a runner and you're also a yogi and you want to keep being better at both at the same time. The first thing that I did was my yoga practice. Apart from the teaching, I was practicing two to three times a week, one hour class of yoga. My yoga practice is a vinyasa. We don't stay in postures. Uh, we keep on moving, but it's kind of active stretching because we don't stay this long in postures. The second thing that I did, and I feel like it helped me a lot, was my foam rolling session. So I have a foam roller and I use it a lot. Um, but I would say during the three months, I pretty much did it every day, 10 minutes before bed. I would roll on my butt, on my hamstring and my quadriceps. And I feel like it just loosened up the muscle. And I will also do it sometimes before runs. The third thing that I did was making sure that I was hydrated 100% every day. I don't have a lot of issues getting hydrated, but I just really wanted to make sure not to forget it. So I was like highly, highly focused on hydration. The fourth thing I did is I basically stretched every day at least 10 minutes but not necessarily in a stretching session. Let me explain. So first thing first, I never stretched after a run directly. I already explained why in the previous video, so make sure you take it out if you wanna know why. But the reason why I say that I stretched at least 10 minutes every day is because of the teaching aspect of my life. <laughs> I don't teach a lot of classes regularly. I have three classes a week and then some weeks I have a bit more that adds up because I'm subbing people or I have like more classes here and there. So during those three months it was either three times a week that I was teaching and up to I think I had a week of like 11 classes to teach. I don't demo a lot. 
I try not to do my lot. Um, I'm getting better at this too because it's kind of new for me. But I would say that the fact that I'm demoing even the slightest bit in the class makes me kind of stretch consistently every day for 10 minutes if you add up all the demonstration that I did. And even if I wasn't teaching, let's say, I would maybe practice at home my own class not entirely but just like sequences of it just to see how it flows together and sometimes if i would have to modify my class or just like remember it i would just like quickly do it i know it sounds nothing but it does count in the fact that i was stretching daily my muscles and so the stretches i mean the muscles that i stretched the most like this were probably the hamstrings and the quadriceps and i believe that's why i remained this flexible is i was doing a little bit every day and so my tip for you of course is not to become a teacher if you don't want to if you can't but it's just to include 10 minutes of stretching specifically your legs every day and not after your run so at the end of the day or maybe in the morning or maybe at noon i don't know whenever you can feed it but just try to move a few times like this i mean i keep doing this because I'm, in my head i have some stretches and the final thing that i did was i wouldn't think flexibility and just let myself hang in the postures or like use gravity for flexibility but i would keep myself mobile in my stretches i've talked about mobility in my last video but i just want to come back to it because some people maybe are just watching this video and sorry there was a fly <laughs> and they didn't want to watch the other one okay i understand i'm not a physiotherapist okay so i might say something wrong but for me from what i've researched and understood mobility is the range of motion that a joint of your body has naturally without applying external forces on it so if you're going in a split split on the floor you're using gravity to pull you down but if you're doing a standing split which i did for the progress that's why i picked the two poses is that you have to use your muscle and all your internal force, your internal strength to get into that flexibility, that range of motion. So mobility is using your own internal forces. Let's say your wrist flexibility, this is flexibility, but this is mobility. As you can see, it doesn't go as far as if I press with my hand, which is flexibility and mobility would be here. So I would just make sure that um, I was more working on mobility so I can be better at running and better at yoga and just include more strength in my workouts. I was working out three times a week and doing squats and lunges and things like that, but I would make sure to use my whole range of motion that means if I'm doing a squat, I'm going as low as I can, things like that. So that's all for this video. I hope you find it helpful. These tips helped you out and or maybe just you wanted to know if I you know, lost flexibility or not. I definitely think that yoga and running are complementary. I didn't think so when I started running. I was like, oh, it's gonna be hard. But you know what? Actually, I feel like the yoga helped me so much in the breathing. I never w felt out of breath. For sure, the yoga helps runners to have more flexible psoas, like more mobile, um, mobile hips, although you really need to work on mobility and not just flexibility for this. Definitely yoga helped me also, I guess, with the stability of my running. It helped me to find the core engagement more and I was always engaging my core when I was running. However, I feel like my core has become way stronger with the running than with the yoga, which is crazy but i think because i was running a long distance i have more endurance in my core now so i can like pull it in so easily and it's like i just feel it stronger thanks to the running so see like i think it's very complementary um if you're a runner you can definitely be a yogi if you're a yogi you can definitely be a runner i wouldn't say that running five times a week you know an hour every time would help you 
get more flexible for sure it won't help you get more flexible but if it's not your goal to be like a contortionist I think you're very good just enjoying whatever you like in life and if that's running and if that's yoga at the same time then go for it you know um, so yeah that was the end message of the video I hope you enjoyed it thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys soon Mwah.